Nano Machine. Bai, An Hong Weolja. Chapter 288. You think I could not do it. Part 1. The old man didn't die from the wound. Among those eight directional markings on the ground that shot out from Yoan as the center, one of them was cut off in the middle. It was where the old man fell on the ground. When Yoan used the seventh formation of the blade skill of the blade god skill, he controlled his power so he will not kill the man. The old man was one of leader who appeared at Jerkang Castle in the past, so it was likely that he knew more information than those spies that entered the cult. Arg. With a scream, the last of the masked men fell to the ground. They were no match against the second and fourth elder of the demonic cult. In Moha and Yang Danwa also had one enemy alive for each of them. It's amazing. Gam Rosu became astounded, as she was still hanging on to Baki's back. She first thought it was lucky enough that she escaped with these people's help but this was more than she had imagined. That young man is a monster. She couldn't forget the moment where countless swords floated through Sword Creek. Screams coming from left and right made Gamrosu became terrified, yet astounded. To think there was another monster than the leader of the Yulin clan, and that man is young. When the situation settled down, young Danwa ran up to Yoan and knelt down. He then banged his head on the ground to apologize. Master, please punish me. Yang Danwa had been accusing himself of Chun Yowan's presumed death from falling into the cliff. Huh? Is he the master they have been talking about? Gam Rosu then realized this young man was the man that these people had been mourning about. As Yowan looked down at Yang Danwa, he smiled. There was no one to blame for what had happened. Yowan helped Yang Danwa up. Oh, and Baki. Who is that you have on the bee, huh? Yowan then suddenly turned to a direction and frowned. Yang Danwa looked up. Master? Yoan looked toward the north, and reached his hand toward his feet and gestured of raising it up. A dead masked man sword was then sucked into Yoan's hand. And at about a mile away from the sword creek toward north, two men with blood-stained clothes were barely running across the bushes. One man with a white beard was Hingwanja, and another was a monk from the mutant clan. Two of them were doing their best to escape from the region. We have to make haste. Thanks to Yoan's group destroying the entry trap to the hidden mansion, they had to fight enemies that rushed in from outside. They were able to kill all enemies that entered, but the only ones alive in the end were Hingwanja and another monk. And as they got out of the mansion, Hingwanja witnessed the impossible. He was terrified by the massacre created by countless air swords. W we have to get away. We can't do anything about that monster. Even if he was one of the nine strong, he was helpless against such a monster. Fortunately, the monster was busy fighting against masked men. I must return to Mutant and bring our full force. Maybe I will need to request help to Northern Division of the Yulin Clan. He had to hurry before they took the godly doctor away. Luckily, Mutant Mountain was only about two days away from the Sword Creek. And if he moved quickly, then it would not be long until he reached the outposts of the Yulin Clan located in the area. Ugh, ha. But he was also concerned about another monk who was running with him. Hing Wenja was injured. But this monk had serious internal damage that he was getting worse as they ran. Hang in there. Ha, Yes, elder. It was better they get some distance before taking rest. Hingwanja figured they would need to be at least five miles away. They were fighting that many enemies. That will buy us some time. That's what he thought. Suddenly, Hingwanja heard something shooting through the air. He barely noticed this when the energy was so close. Hingwanja quickly got down and shouted. Get down. What? But the monk couldn't get down in time. Arg. A sword penetrated through the monk from the back. E, elder. The monk called out to Hingwanja once and died. Hingwanja felt chill running through his spines. Were all those masked men killed in that short amount of time? This is impossible. He sensed this distance? Hingwanja was a superior master level warrior, so he could throw a spear or sword about 400 meters, given that there were no obstacles or bushes like this. But this was simply impossible. Are Supreme Master level warriors really monsters? This level of power would surely be called the top leader of either the forces of evil or the cult. He needed to ask help from allies as soon as possible. My brother. I am sorry. There was no time to take the body. Hing Wenja took the book that dead monk had in his pocket. It was the book that Gam Rosu had taken out. The book had a hole when the sword penetrated through the chest, but Hing Wenja took the book anyway. He had been running slow as he had to keep the pace with the monk but now he was able to run away quickly. Soon after he left, someone arrived where they were at. It was second elder In Moha. Yoan used all of his energy by throwing the sword, so he ordered In Moha to chase after the escapee. She checked on the dead body of the monk. Ah. 
the body had a sword that Yoan threw. The forest was dense with bushes so she wasn't sure if Yoan had gotten the target, but it accurately got the target it was thrown for. Another one escaped. It's him. There were two men's footsteps that led her here. Ian Moha decided to follow the footsteps of another man that ran. If the man was who she was thinking of, then it was dangerous if she let him go. Chapter 289. You think I could not do it. Part 2. Inside the hidden mansion within Sword Creek. Godly Dr. Gamrosu was. Frantically searching through all parts of the building. She didn't look good as she seemed to have lost something she valued. W where did it go? Where is it? She remembered last time when she took it into her pocket. But when she was done packing up and escaped, the book disappeared. It was a treasure that was passed. Down from generations so she had to find it. And while Gamrosu was busily. Searching through, Yoan's group was busy taking care of dead bodies outside the cliff. Ugh. This is heavy. Make sure you erase those trackings on the ground, Hubong. Yeah, of course. Hubong and Baki were gathering bodies in one place. They couldn't burn it all down at once as there were too many bodies, so they gathered 20 at a time to burn them down. Just those outside? Yoan ordered to leave the bodies that were inside the mansion intact. Yang Danwa agreed with Yoan's idea. The bodies outside were those who were killed by them, but ones inside were the result of the masked men and the mutant clan fighting against each other, so it was better to leave them alone. It's not here. Yang Danwa's face turned grim. The mansion was in ruins from the fight and there were countless bodies. But Yang Danwa couldn't find the body of Hing Wenjia, the mutant strong sword. Was it him that the Lord sensed earlier? It was the man they should not have allowed to escape. If that man took even a glimpse of Yoan's power, then it was likely that he will bring the entire force of the mutant clan here. Let's hope Eldarin caught up to him. In Moha was within the top five strongest warriors of the demonic cult. Even if Hing Wanja was one of the strong nine, it wasn't likely that In Moha would have too much trouble in taking the man back. Godly doctor. Someone called out to Gamrosu who was still searching frantically. It was Chen Yoan. She stubbornly insisted on being called Granny Gam if she was called with such title, but she couldn't do this to Yoan. Why yes, what is it? My rescuer. It was Yoan who saved her life, so she called him her rescuer. I know you're busy, but can you get me some medicinal herbs first? Herbs? Gamrosu became curious. Yoan took one of the papers on the table and wrote down what he needed. He was asking since they were inside the mansion of the best doctor in the Jianghu. Gam Rosu became surprised when she saw the list of herbs and mumbled. Dry opium poppy? Do you have it? Not a lot, but I do have some in stock to use as a painkiller. Yoan turned to a smile at the answer. And in the mansion, in one of the rooms? Mun Ku and Ho Sangwa left two masked men and the old man in separate rooms, all tied up. The two women were doing something while they were looking at the tied man on the chair. Do you see the thin line behind the ear? Oh, this one? Yeah, that's it. Mun Ku explained and Ho Sangwa found the line drawn between the old man's neck and ear. It was very well hidden that it was hard to recognize. But Mun Ku had lived for years with a mask, so she knew where to look. With Ho Sangwa pulling on the skin, the old man's skin stretched as it uncovered the face beneath it. Huh? Two of them became confused. The old man spoke like an old man, so they thought the enemy would be very old, but he wasn't that old. The superior master level warrior would go through body reconstruction so it was hard to tell the one's real age, but this man looked like in his late thirties. I thought he was older. Yeah, huh? That's when the man flinched. It seemed he was waking up from being passed out. Mun Ku ran out to fetch someone. NNGH. The man barely opened his eyes. He then saw ropes tying him down on the chair as he opened his eyes. Have I been captured? He thought he was killed when he was struck down. He then looked down at his wound, which was covered with linen wrap. They kept me alive. It was easy to see why they kept him alive. It was probably to gather information. Fools. You will not get any information from me. Even if he lost, he had no intention of spilling the secrets of the Blade God's Six Martial Clan. There was no way to run, so it was better if he just killed himself. But as he tried to send internal energy to go berserk and damage himself to die, a strong pain came in to stop him. There was a large needle stuck on each of his blood points so that he couldn't move any internal energy. Damn. They locked me down. Everything was thought through. He also was gagged with rags so that he couldn't bite on his tongue either. As the man became grim, the door of the room opened. A young man with long hair walked in. It was Chen Yoan. When the old man saw Yoan walking in, he remembered what happened before he passed out again. 
he became curious as to how Yoan had learned that martial art. NNNNGH. But he couldn't speak. You can stay outside, Sangwa. But, it's okay. Yes, my lord. Ho Sangwa walked out and Yoan walked up to the man and placed a chair to sit down. He then pulled out the rag from the man's mouth. Ha, ha. The man let out a long sigh. He then looked up and glared. You. How can a mere warrior of the cult know his blade skill? There was no need for anything else. He was only curious as to how Yoan had learned the martial art. Yoan then scoffed as he opened his mouth to speak. Let me correct you on two things first. What? I am not just a mere warrior of the cult. The man then spoke with a smirk. Fool. You think I did not recognize you? You are from the Jerkang? NNGH. Yoan suddenly grabbed on the man's mouth. He then shook his head and continued. Let me tell you this. I am not a mere warrior, but the sky and the master of the demonic cult. Sky? Master? W wait. The man became curious at first, but frowned as he realized what Yoan had said. It meant Yoan was saying he was the lord of the cult. E. You are the lord of the demonic cult? It was unbelievable. Why would the lord come down to the remote region of the forces of justice by himself? Huh? Yoan then placed his hand below the man's stomach. The man looked back at Yoan and Yoan spoke coldly. Second, you have no right to question me. W wait. But before he could finish, Yoan's powerful energy penetrated the man's internal energy. A R O A were Gerg. Chapter 290. You think I could not do it. Part 3. Strong energy penetrated the man's stomach and brought heavy pain to the man. The internal energy within him was being cracked down. The most painful experience for the warriors of Yulin would be when their internal damage was destroyed. The physical pain was beyond imaginable, but the pain of losing something that the warrior had built in his entire life brought loss that was more than what one could bear. Eh arg? Why you? Just kill me? The man screamed and insisted on killing him. But Yoan ignored his screaming and finished destroying the internal energy. Eh arg? The man screamed from extreme pain and soon passed out. But he was woken up immediately. Searing pain on his cheek woke him up. His face was drenched in sweat and pale from the pain. He still felt extreme pain beneath his stomach. Ah, and my internal energy, it's gone? He already prepared to be killed, but the feeling of losing internal energy wasn't something he could bear. Yoan then suddenly clapped his hands in front of the man's eyes. The man became dumbfounded by such action and looked up. Is he trying to? He had lost his internal energy, but he didn't miss the strange sound when Yoan clapped. It was likely that the clap contained energy within it. Ha, huh. are you trying to put me under hypnosis? Hypnosis. The man was one of the leaders within the Blade God Six Martial Clan and there was one leader in particular who specialized in such hypnosis. But he went missing after he entered the cult, so the clan thought the man was dead already. Did you spill your secret to the cult? The result was disappointing. Whatever the case, there was no way the hypnosis will work on him. You know. Yoan looked surprised. He just clapped once, so he didn't think the man would recognize what he was trying to do right away. The man scoffed. Ha, huh, you are a fool. You think copying our clan's magic will work? He had lost internal energy but he and the other leaders were trained to build immunity against poppies. There was no way that they would be put under the same magic that they created. Ha ha, ha, ha 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 ha, question mark. I was worried because of your monstrous power, but you are not as smart. You said you are the lord of the cult? Don't. NNGH. Shut up. Yoan grabbed his mouth again. The man couldn't speak and the man then forced open the man's mouth and picked something up from the ground. It was a medicine pot. NNNNGH. WRRU, doin'? Yoan ignored him and put the pot's opening into the man's mouth and began pouring in the medicine soup into the man's mouth. The man tried to spit it out but Yoan clogged his nose, so the man couldn't fight back on swallowing it. The soup was boiling hot. After making him swallow a good amount, Yoan took off the pot from the man's mouth. Ugh, arg. The man coughed for a long time, but soon forgot the pain of being burned and smirked at Yoan. I, I told you it's no use, you are a fool. Even if the recipe was revealed, he had built an immunity against its substance. There was no use of doing this to other masked men who were kept in other rooms. Do you, think we are not, prepared for this, ah, uh, huh? W what is, what am I? But he felt his body become relaxed and began to feel good. It was changing so fast that the world seemed to be turning around and melted away. The man barely got his thoughts together and asked, W, what did you do, to me? Do you honestly think I would use the same recipe that you people use? 
What? The substance that Yohan made the man swallow had knowledge of future medicine mixed into it. Nano called this a truth serum. Out of 35 truth serums, 30 of them are outlawed by international law. There is one that uses a substance called Ritalin among those that are not illegal. Ritalin was a substance used under medical circumstances, but was also used as a truth serum in certain militaries. Nano mixed this with the original mixture to make it work better. Yohan was able to create this as the godly doctor had most of the herbs required in her storage. I made it more powerful than the one you people use. T, that is impossible. How did you, how? He was certain that there was no way that the medicine will work on him, but it worked really well. He felt his body becoming relaxed, and he felt the urge to start speaking. He bit his lips to endure and shook his head. Yohan smiled. You think I could not do something you guys did? Did I me? N? No. And Yohan began to clap, with his energy focused on his hand. After a few claps, the man's eyes became numb. He was now under full hypnosis. Yohan was actually very fascinated as this really worked. It also helped that the man had lost his internal energy to fight back. Let me start one by one. Yohan thought he should follow what Nano told him to do, hypnotizing people. Yohan clapped his hand in front of the man and spoke. You will answer my question each time I snap my finger. Yes. And now, he was free to ask questions. Yohan asked who the man was. What is your name? I am Li Beck, the sword master of the Blade God Six Martial Clan, one of six martial masters of the clan. Chapter 291. You think I could not do it. Part 4. Yohan became astounded. It really worked, as the man clearly explained who he was. Yohan thought for a second on what to ask next, and asked what he wanted to know the most. Why did you want to take the doctor with you? She has the relic left by our founder. Yohan frowned. It seemed that this founder was what the man referred to as him until now. And what is that relic? It is a schematic to create the extreme martial body. Extreme martial, what? What is that? It is a body that can learn the best martial arts of our clan, the extreme art of the blade god. Extreme art of the blade god? Yohan then thought that maybe the name was the name of the blade skill of the blade god that he had learned. Yohan asked just in case. Was the blade skill I used against you the extreme art of the blade god? That is correct. He had learned this blade skill for months, and finally learned its name. But why did these people need a schematic to make such a body? Why do you need that schematic? Extreme art of the blade god requires a special way. We need it to bring our physical parts beyond their limits so we can learn the extreme art. Ah. Yohan nodded. The extreme art of Blade God was a martial art that was not possible to learn for ordinary people. Yohan was able to use it by strengthening his physical traits and muscles beyond the limit of humans with Nano's help, but that method wasn't possible for anyone else. Wait, but why do they need this? These were people who said that the Blade God was their ancestor. How could they not know how to learn their ancestor's martial art completely? It was curious as to why they would need the schematic. And above all, how did the godly doctor put her hands on such a schematic in the first place? He was curious and asked. We do not know. What? Li Beck seemed he did not know how Gamrosu had acquired the book. Of course, they would have already have taken it for themselves if they knew how Gamrosu got her hands on it. Yohan changed the question. How did you know that Gamrosu had it? We learned through our spies at the Yulin's clan's secret organization, Blue Sky Brotherhood. Blue Sky Brotherhood? Yohan had learned about every organization within the Yulin clan before he left the castle, but he had never heard of such a name. As Yohan became curious about what the organization was, Li Beck continued. We learned that one of Blue Sky Brotherhood's plans was to use Godly Doctor's project to create warriors with superhuman strengths. We were able to confirm that they were talking about the extreme martial body. After acquiring this piece of information, the clan sent out Li Beck to retrieve the book. After getting the information that the mutant clan was protecting and watching the godly doctor, it took them a month to find the godly doctor's hideout. Sword Creek was located in the middle of the territory of the Yulin clan, so it required them to move very carefully. I have the answer to my question at least. Yohan now learned why the blade god Six Martial clan wanted to get the doctor, and it was now time to unravel their important secret. The hidden power of the blade god Six Martial clan, along with their secrets and motives. With these known, it was going to allow Yohan to strike back. With Hu Bong and Baki returning to the mansion after taking care of bodies. Outside, only one remained that didn't return yet. It was Ian Moha, tracking down Hing Wenja. Hu Bong and Baki were dirty with ashes from burning all the bodies. This is tiring. Hu Bong was exhausted. 
Backy nodded as he too was exhausted from long work. Young Damwa spoke to them. Good work. We are not sure when we will leave, so you two can get some rest while you can. They were in the middle of enemy territory, so even if it wasn't for the escaped Hingwenja, warriors of the Yulin clan could appear at any moment. Yang Danwa suggested for Hu Bang and Baki to rest. That's when Gam Rosu appeared. Granny Gam? I, it's not there. What's going on? Did you not find the one you were looking for? They heard that Gam Rosu had to search for an important book that she lost already. There's nothing in the storage. You too, did you see any weird book made with special paper outside? All of them shook their heads at the question. It was obvious that the book was taken by Hing Wenjia. Ah, uh, what should I do? She felt bad for losing an important family relic that was handed down from her ancestors. That's when they heard some noise toward the entrance. Huh? Yang Danwa, Bak Gi, and Hu Bang all took their stances to be ready to fight at any moment. They sent a telepathic message to Gam Rosu to stay still. And as they waited nervously, someone appeared through the cave entrance. It was In Moha, Elder In. In Moha finally returned from her chase. On her back, there was something that was tied around with ripped clothing. It was a body with no limbs. Ah! It was Hing Wenjia. In Moha was successful in bringing the man back. But as she had to fight a warrior of equal strength, she too had small injuries and was also pale from exhaustion, proving the hard battle she fought. T these people are so cruel. Hing Wenjia had been threatening and pressuring her, but Gam Rosu felt sorry to find Hing Wenjia in such a state. She was a doctor so she had seen many horrible sights that enabled her to see this without much shock, but it wasn't a sight for normal people to see. Gam Rosu became certain that these people were not from the forces of justice. It's amazing. Yang Danwa, however, was glad that they were able to put down one of the strong nine, a powerful foe within the forces of justice, and tried to congratulate her. Elder In, you have, but an explosion came somewhere within the mansion. T that's. That was the place where Yoan was questioning the old man that they captured. M Master. They all ran toward the explosion at once. Chapter 292. You think I could not do it. Part, 5. Noisy screaming sound filled the dark stone room. It was much noisier and annoying than the sound of a cricket. Someone entered the stone room with a candlelight. The light was so dim that it didn't reveal the man's face. He then walked slowly in and searched for the one that was screaming loudly. On the stone wall, there were. Shelves with many wooden boxes. Among them, there was a red wooden box that had the word, sword, written over it. The man took the box, which the sound was coming from within. When he opened it, there was a fist-long centipede. It only had its antennae in a mouth, that was screaming with a weird sound as it shook. The man picked it up. I sent you to pick up the object, not spill our information. Oomph. The man spat and clenched his fist. The centipede screamed within the fist and soon exploded from the pressure and the man watched white liquid dripping within his hand and smiled. Whoever you are, you are a fool if you think you can find something out from him. At the same time within the hidden mansion of Sword Creek, Yoan was asking questions through hypnosis. Li Beck had been telling all answers to every question Yoan had until now. Now, they were moving on to the important question. Yoan had to find out where the Blade God's six martial clan was hiding, how strong they were, and their purpose. The Blade God had disappeared from the Yulin for 500 years and the Blade God's six martial clan never revealed themselves within that time. If they appeared now, it was certain that they were ready for whatever purpose they set out to do. Yoan wanted to know what that purpose was, so he could be prepared. The founder you said, is that the Blade God? You, ugh. Li Beck shook his body for the first time during the questioning. His eyes were shaking and showing resistance in answering that question. He's fighting back. Yoan snapped his finger again. E. Yes. Li Beck then barely answered the question. As expected, the Blade God's six martial clan had descendants of the Blade God himself. Then are you people divided up into six groups, just like how your name describes it. And with questions going into details, the resistance only grew. Li Beck was now being drenched in sweat and also his face turned red. It's getting bad. He had no internal energy to fight back, but still resisted against the truth serum and the hypnosis. Yoan then realized this was strange to think it was coming from strong will. Huh? That's when Li Beck's numb eyes turned clear. Veins popped up from his forehead and his head began to expand in size. Li Beck seemed to be in pain, but he smirked at Yoan. I told you you will not find anything from me. He knew this would happen if things went south. All leaders were put on restrictions just in case something happened to them. 
As soon as they try to speak the information that they were not supposed to spill, a male centipede within their head would send a signal to the female. This centipede was to die by an explosion if one of the pair died. NNNGH. Lee Beck felt a strange thing in his head and felt something expanding within. Yoan then placed his hand over his head. NNNGH. W what? Light shined from Yoan's palm and when it was done, augmented reality activated over Yoan's eyes. Yoan was shown with information followed by a white square on a head. After MRI scanning of the target, an insect within the brain is found to be expanding. Yoan saw the image of something small and red becoming large. Hmm. Yoan frowned. He didn't quite get all the information yet, but it seemed there had been protection over it. Lee Beck saw Yoan's frown and smiled. Ah. Haha. You won't get anything. I see. Even if you are supreme master level. That's when Yoan's hand unleashed a powerful electric shock into Lee Beck's head. Gagaga gaga gaga gaga. Lee Beck's entire body trembled through electricity running through. His eyes, ears, nose and mouth all spilled blood from within. Yoan then placed his hand over his right eye. Nano, help me so I don't damage his brain. Yes, master. With Yoan's energy penetrating into the man's head, it started pulling something out. It was the insect that put to a stop from exploding itself through Nano's electric shock. Located the insect. Let's pull it out. Acquiring control over the energy from the user. The electricity circled around the insect and Nano used its energy to bring out the insect slowly so that the brain would not take any damage. Gaga 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 gaga. Lee Beck's right eye began to move. And when Yoan gestured pulling it out, Lee Beck's right eye was pulled out, followed by the centipede about two fingers long behind it. Aerarg. Ha! Yoan then controlled his energy to bring the centipede up through the ceiling. The insect then shot through the ceiling to be thrown out of the building, and when the electricity was taken out, it instantly expanded and exploded above. White ooze dropped on the roof of the building. Uh, arg. Li Beck was under huge pain from both the electric shock and the pain of having his eyeball pulled out, but he couldn't close his eye. He was looking up with fear to Chen Yuan. H, how can this happen? Is this man really a monster? He had not even dreamt that such thing would be possible. It was impossible to even think to pull out such an insect from within the body. Brain damage at minimum, but the target is in serious condition. Yoan then realized he had to make it quick. A low electricity volt energized Li Beck's brain to think clearly, but it seemed Li Beck didn't have much time left. This will hurt, but I will have to make this quick. NNNGH, what? Yoan then snapped his finger by Li Beck's ear. Li Beck then became numb again. Chapter 293. You think I could not do it. Part, 6. What? Ho Sangwa and Mun Ku became surprised when they found something being thrown up over the ceiling and exploding. They climbed up and saw white ooze all over the roof. W what is this? Am I lord? Mun Ku thought something must have happened within the room, so she quickly ran down and burst into the room. Hayek. She screamed as soon as she walked in. Yoan was listening to something that Li Beck was saying as he held on Li Beck's head. It was a horrible sight as Li Beck's right eye was dangling out of his eye socket. N, N, G, Sh, Jerkang, Ash, Hongju, at Hang San Castle, our base. Li Beck who was barely speaking then dropped his head down. He finally died. Ha! Yoan let go of his hand. He wanted to get as much information as possible, but he was only able to find a few. But that was good enough. My lord. That's when other members also ran into the room. It seemed they were all shocked by the sound of the explosion. Yang Danwa walked up to Yoan and asked, Are you okay, my lord? They were concerned if something serious had happened, but Yoan seemed safe. Yoan then spoke to his members. I have found their location. It was in Hangsan near the Jerkang castle. Li Beck revealed the location of Blade God's six martial clan's home before he died. Yoan's group all became surprised. And in another room, Hing Wanja was tied to a chair without his arms or legs. His face was pale and he didn't seem to be in good shape. Ian Moha stopped him from bleeding after she overpowered him, but there was two blood that was lost. Ha, huh, you cut off his arms and legs. This is natural. Gamrosu shook her head. She treated Hing Wanja, but Hing Wanja lost so much blood that Gamrosu said he would only last about an hour. She suggested supplying Hing Wanja with blood, but they had to leave soon so they didn't intend on making Hing Wanja live a bit longer. I have something to ask you, my rescuer. Gamrosu begged Yoan. She was the best doctor there was in entire land of Jianghu, so she already knew what Yoan created from the list of herbs that he got from her. If you are using that medicine to Monk King, give me a chance to question him. 
Gamrosu said that she was asked by an organization called the Blue Sky Brotherhood to work on a project on finding a way to bring one's body beyond its physical limit. The reason behind this project was? Blue Sky Brotherhood said they are creating powerful warriors to make the world a better place. I didn't want to get involved in any of things happening in Yulin but. She had to change her mind when her only granddaughter was kidnapped year ago by a warrior from the forces of evil. With her only family and successor being kidnapped, she became vengeful and accepted the Blue Sky Brotherhood's request. They said they have to win war against the forces of evil to get my granddaughter back. But they couldn't do that with their current power. She was too busy thinking about revenge to realize at first, but as time passed, she began to grow suspicious. The Blue Sky Brotherhood was created by powerful warriors from many powerful clans and families from the forces of justice, but they kept saying they weren't even sure if Gamrosu's kidnapped granddaughter was even alive. Monk Hing, I'm certain he knows something. Gamrosu was certain that he was hiding some truth. But she was only a doctor so there was no way for her to find out. She only figured she had to fulfill her part of the request to be the only way of saving her granddaughter. If you help me, I don't care where you are from. I will help you with all I can. There was no reason Yoan would reject her request. The godly doctor was a doctor with noble heart so he was concerned on how to persuade her to come see Lord Chun Yujong, so this was better for Yoan. I will let you ask him first then. Yoan offered her to ask first. After destroying the internal energy and making him consume medicine, Yoan hypnotized Hing Wenjia. Hing Wenjia became numb just like how Li Beck had become. My granddaughter, don't you really know where Gam Mayan is being held? Yoan snapped his finger and Hing Wenjia opened his mouth. Granny Gam's granddaughter is being held at Yango House, one of the 18 houses. W what? Gam Rosu became furious at the immediate response of her granddaughter's location. She had asked countless times if her granddaughter was found, but Hing. Wenja always said they were looking for her. She bit on her lips to endure her fury and asked. Why, why did you not tell me until now? Granny Gam. We were told by our master of brotherhood to refrain from telling you before you finish the project. We were in touch with the Yango family of the 18 River families, so we can always bring back your granddaughter as soon as you are finished with the project. Why, you are in contact with the Yango family? Gamrosu's face turned red from fury. Every member of Yoan's group was within the room with them, and all of them became dumbfounded from what they heard. Hu Bong shook his head. Ha! Huh. They are worse than forces of evil. What a evil monk! Shut up! Ho Sangwa poked his stomach to make him fall silent. Gamrosu was already so shocked, so there was no need to make her become more furious. But even if Hu Bong didn't say anything, Gamrosu had already lost her temper. Yo! She furiously charged and began to choke King Wenja's neck.